So we were at PAX East, and at PAX East we play a lot of games. Yep. And we could talk about a lot of those games, but today we're just going to talk about two that we played back-to-back. Uh, basically, we're sitting there on Sunday. We got some time before the Omegathon, and I, you know, in my wanderings of tabletop working in there, I had noticed a few games. So I went over to the library. I grabbed one. We played it. I went, returned it, grabbed the other one, and we played it because uh, they were quick, and they looked like a lot of fun. Uh, they looked easy to learn, and they were dexterity grabby games, and we had the circle table, which was great for dexterity grabby games. And they were both pretty good. Yeah. So the first one... Uh, it's called Catch the Moon, and basically... From 2017, it's a recent game. Both of these are recent games. The other one was 2018. It was a nominee for the Cardboard Republic Socializer, Laurel. Yeah. So, if you know our opinion on stacking games like Jenga or Via Paletti or the Rhino Hero or any of these stacking balance games, most of the ones that we've played, right, sort of have the sa- similar mechanical problems, not in terms of the fun of the stacking or the skill of the stacking. Because that part's often That great. part's solid. It's really easy to do that. It's not Via that- Paletti with the hook? Yeah. I it, love that hook. It's super fun and solid. The problem is... The, the victory conditions and the actual rules for winning and losing a lot of these games are very flawed. Yep. A lot of them are, you make it fall down, you lose, everyone else wins. Which that's is, unsatisfying. That's very unsatisfying. Uh, there's a lot of turn order determines who wins. It's like Via okay, Paletti. Right, a Jenga tower will become destabilized on about the X turns. You have this many players, you want to have turn X to be, so that way it'll be the most stable on your turn. Yep. Games it, like Via Paletti that run out of pieces. It's really dissatisfying if turn order is what determines. It's like, aha, it became unstable on the turn before yours, so you lose regardless of your actual pulling skill. Yep, and turn order wouldn't matter that much, except stacking games, if people get good at stacking, then turn order is the only thing left to determine who wins. Yeah. And it's also dissatisfying, because most of them involve, you know, balancing and, and shakiness, and then a thing collapsing. And when the thing collapses, it's like, well, GG, we can't continue, we don't have anything left. Yep. So, this game we played, Catch the Moon, uh, I'm not going to say it perfectly solves all those problems, but it does go a long way towards solving them, and it tries to solve them, and for that, I give it a lot of credit. Plus, it's still really fun to fiddle with this game because what this game is, it is a game of balancing little wooden ladders. And they're all shaped slightly differently. Right, it's a bunch of little wooden ladders. You start the game with two straight ones in this plastic cloud that sort of keeps them erect. Uh, And there's a lot of different starting positions for the two starting ladders. And then you roll some dice or something like that. It's dice, right? Uh, yes. And they tell you how... You have to place your ladder. It's like your ladder has to be exactly touching one other ladder, two other ladders. You know, it, it's like there's a rule about how you have to place your ladder. But as long as you follow that rule, the other, the, the important thing is one. Your ladder has to have some part of it higher in elevation than all the existing ladders in the thing. You nominate one of your hands as your grabby hand, and you can't ever touch anything with anything but that hand. Yeah, you got to use one hand only. But here's so. You grab a random ladder. You can't choose one. Most stacking games have rules like you can't fuck with the structure. Like you can't fuck with parts of the Jenga you're not actively moving. Yep. In this game, you can do whatever the hell you want to the structure. As long as you only use one hand. And you only touch it with the ladder you're about to place. Yeah, you can't put your hands on the the existing ladder. It's only your ladder you're placing. As long as you do not break it or touch the cloud or the table with the ladder in your hand drop the ladder in your hand, or break the rule of placement, like touching too many at the same time. Yep. You gotta you obey can, the dice. Yeah, as long as you obey the dice, you can fuck with it as much as you want to get it on there, and yeah. you might think, well, wouldn't we just make a really ugly, weird structure? Hell yeah. Yeah, that's right. And there's a lot of crazy shit you can do. The instruction book is actually really good. It shows you a lot of different possible ways of placing your ladder. And different, it even names them. And different techniques with funny names. Right? What's the shameful something? The we shameful used, stack? We used the shameful whatever, the shameful whatever it is many, many times. We just lay a ladder flat on top of another ladder. Yep. We did that frequently. Oh, we, my God. We had no shame. We had a game where there were four, like, shameful stacks in a row, and then, like, another structure, and then another three higher up. And oh, the it was shameful su- support. The shameful support. <laughs> so we did that a lot. <laughs> anyway, uh, but, yeah, this game is a ton of fun. Uh, the one thing that makes it really good is that, let's say you fuck up on your turn. You go and you try to put your ladder, and you end up knocking over a shit ton of ladders. Well, the way it works, you can't. It, there's no way to make the entire thing just collapse That's true, that's nothing. true. But let's say I go to place my ladder, and a whole bunch of ladders fall off. I just, I just mess up real bad. All right, I scoop up all those ladders, and just put them in front of me. They're now negative points. Yep. I don't lose, 
The game doesn't continue. Turn order doesn't determine victory or anything like that. Um, we just keep going, and it's like you can still keep having fun. The game doesn't end disappointingly. There but is, you also there, get a there teardrop. Is a, there the is, gods are disappointed in right. you. There is a clear winner at the end, uh, and it's more likely that the winner is going to be the person with the best ladder placing skill as opposed to the person with the most luck or seat position or anything like that. Because I think and though, that I makes think it the, a much more satisfying dexterity game. I th I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly, the rule is when the game ends, meaning all the ladders have either been placed or been fucked up in some way, mm -hmm. then whoever has the least tiers yep. wins the game because they fucked up the least. Yep. If multiple people are tied... Then, with tears, then whoever has the least ladders wins the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this game is like 80% And the game also the ends there. when you run out of ladders, I think, right? Yeah. So it's like you place all the ladders. You can have the same number of turns. You can also have a ton of players going in this game. What does it go to, like eight players or something ridiculous? I forget. We played with varying numbers of players, and it always worked. I think uh, six players. Yep. It goes to six. which best is Best with three to four, which I could see. Right, yeah. It's definitely best with three to four, but... Yeah, because you're going to get, you know, if you play with too many players, it'll still be just fine as a game, but there'll be a lot of waiting and as a, fewer turns per person, which will make it less fun. Yep. But otherwise, the game will still be solid, even with six players. So I feel like this, I feel like I want to buy it because it is the best second game for us I've found yet. I do like it, but I feel like you want to just want to take these advances in stacking game rules Ooh. and apply them to an even better stacking game. Yeah, the trouble is a lot of the stacking games I like the most are such that if someone fucks up, the entire thing is likely to collapse. Yeah, but, you know, what if it's via Paletti and it's like, okay, if you knock something over, you take all those cylinder as a point yeah. to get a teardrop or something? I don't know. We, we but, yeah, just take these innovations and apply them to the, to the genre to, to push it forward uh, from where it is now. Yeah, props to Fabian Rifad and Juan Rodriguez for advancing the genre of... Stacking dexterity tabletop games. Yep. Like, I don't know if you realized you were solving these fundamental problems of the genre, but I'm you sure they did. You solved like the primary things we've complained about for more than a decade in the stacking genre. Right. It also goes to show you, you know, someone like me sits there and looks at like a flaw in a game and like is like, oh, I'll make a game that fixes this and I'll think about ideas and like I won't unless I got the perfect solution. It's like, nope, not good enough. Whereas like they're just like, yeah, good enough solution. They put it out there and they publish it and they actually make something. Yep. <laughs> and it's good. And then someone talks about it on a podcast or someone to me sits there and still thinking of like, it's not perfect. 